What's up, YouTube viewers? When it comes to schlocky horror movies about sharks, there are only a handful outside of Jaws that are even remotely scary, let alone good. And yet, in a post-Sharknado world, it seems there will always be those trying to create a surprise hit based on our fears of the underwater creature. Forget your more measured documentary that lays out the actual reasons why sharks attack people. We're going to get Jason Statham Meg movies until either morale improves or we all die just so it will end, whichever comes first. Any shark movie, no matter how serious-minded it may imagine itself to be, will have to deal with this ocean of baggage and audience expectations to even have a chance of staying afloat. Something in the Water, the feature debut of director Haley Easton Street and writer Kat Clark, definitely is attempting to be in the more thoughtful category. It isn't just big shark attacks and shoddy CGI, though there is eventually quite a bit of that. No, this is a movie that is attempting to also be about dealing with past trauma, a wedding with a strangely high amount of genital jokes, and a group of friends whose lives are about to be upended. For all the ways the picturesque destination may initially recall the sharp recent horror film Influencer or the series The White Lotus, no surprises are waiting in what proves to be a generally stodgy experience. Not only does it feel particularly tactless when it comes to dealing with the more serious topic of trauma, the shark encounter comes far too late and delivers far too little. It's just not up to the task in either arena ultimately sinking to the bottom. This all begins with the accidentally humorously named Meg played by Hiftu Quasim who is about to deal with something deeply unhumorous. While out with Caleb, played by Natalie Mitson, one night they are the target of a violent homophobic attack. Meg is launched down the stairs and beaten. A year later, she has found a way to navigate the PTSD and everyday stress that comes from traveling to a destination wedding where she is reuniting with her friends. Oh, and she has also had a bit of a split with Kayla. The reason for this is related to the attack, which is where the film already begins to struggle with the emotional nuances of this more serious topic. While any movie, even a horror film about a shark attack, can engage with more painful real-world topics, just giving your character a traumatic backstory without much care put into it will only make it all feel superficial. Considering how quickly this then gets swallowed up by the subsequent shark attack, it only makes it feel that much more thoughtless. All you need to know is that Meg Kayla, Lizzie played by Lauren Lyle, Cam played by Nicole Rico Setsko, and Ruth played by Eloise Shakespeare Hart go out to a remote island in what is meant to be a comically dingy boat. When a shark takes a bite out of Ruth as they're playing in shallow waters, they try to speed back to get her to safety. The only problem is they take a wrong turn and puncture a hole in the bottom of the bottom of the boat. The rest of the runtime is then them in the film itself treading water while a shark supposedly circles. There are occasional moments where Meg will get flashbacks to the attack, but it mostly is just a monotonous slog as we wait for something significant to happen. Instead, the film remains both narratively and emotionally inert. We get lots of shots of the characters desperately kicking their legs under the water. The classic visual language of these types of movies and increasingly start to panic. Even when a fin begins circling, the film keeps undercutting itself with odd humor and rather stiff performances. The result is a tonal mess where it wants to be a more harrowing and honest depiction of a crisis, though without bringing even close to the necessary levels of tact to pull it off. It tries to take a plunge into more complicated questions of morality and healing, though it just continually skims along the surface. For all the times it will crank up the cloyingly sentimental music, nothing ever lands how it seems to want to. Making a movie about a shark that is essentially a serial killer stalking its prey and a more emotionally grounded portrait of a group of friends trying to survive is something that could work, though something in the water is not the film to prove this to be true. Everything is too pat with characters either shouting out lines that tell us what we need to be feeling or saying how they need to take a wee to cut through whatever minimal tension was building. When this shifts into bickering between characters, it feels like the film is attempting to fill time. That there is a surprising revelation thrown and just comes across as forced rather than genuinely interesting. However, that is not the biggest problem of the film by a long shot. Instead, it's the shark itself. That the film attempts to show a decent amount of the shark without the necessary buildup or robust effects to ensure it leaves an impact just makes the whole thing feel increasingly absurd. Whether it is in some overhead shots that look like a bad mobile game you pull up for your cat to play with, or when the film tries to hide some of what is happening in darkness so you don't notice the iffy fi effects, none of it works. It isn't the worst shark movie out there, but that's not saying much. By the time we get to the big final confrontation, it loses a handle on what it was going for. Every moment where the creature jumps out of the water is comical and immediately takes you out of the whole thing. One sequence near the very end where it does this multiple times in a row while a character tries to climb to safety is admittedly very funny. However, in a film that was perpetually adrift without anywhere to go, it still never takes a bite out of anything more. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for more deep dives into your favorite films. Bye.